If you are thinking about signing up for T-Mobile's new T-Vision streaming service, well, you're in the right place because I'm going to show you around today. My name is Michael and welcome to the Michael Saves YouTube channel. Happy to have you here and this is my T-Vision review. If you haven't followed me before, I review streaming services. You may have read my reviews for YouTube TV, Hulu Live, or Sling TV in the past. Now there's a new service, T-Mobile's T-Vision. And I was lucky enough to test out T-Vision for 10 days before it launched, as well as this thing. This is the T-Mobile Hub. It comes with a remote. I've got a lot to say about that too. In this video, there will be two parts. First, I'll talk about the service itself, and then this optional T-Vision Hub streaming media player. So why don't we get started? I'll show you around, and we'll begin with the home screen. So here's what T-Vision looks like as soon as you fire it up. At the top, you see there's this carousel and it will have new and trending content. But I'll tell you during my 10 day test, this content didn't swap out. So it wasn't really personalized as you'd find with other services like Netflix and Hulu. Right below the carousel, you will see the list of T-Vision services that you're subscribed to. In this case, it's T-Vision Live. Those are the 40 to $60 a month plans that have sports, news, and local stations. T-Vision Vibe, entertainment focus, $10 a month to start, as well as a la carte channels, Showtime, Stars. I also have Epics here. Now I was given access to everything, so if you just subscribe to, let's say, T-Vision Vibe, it's about 30 channels. You're not gonna have as many movies, shows, and live entertainment as you would if you also had the T-Vision Live plan or the a la carte channels. You can pick and choose what you want to subscribe to and have a little control over your monthly bill. On this home screen, you probably noticed the transparency in the background is the last station that I was watching. It'll continue to play. And if you move out of the live guide, you'll be able to just keep watching the last show that you were on. I'm going to scroll down and show you some of the content categories. You'll see on now, popular movies, popular shows, sports on now, news on now, your recordings, and continue watching, as well as comedy movies after that, movies for the family, reality and lifestyle, TV comedies, TV dramas, and then at the bottom, T-Vision Networks. As I scroll back to the top, I'll tell you that I was a little surprised how far down continue watching is compared to some other streaming services. That is usually at the top to help you discover content that you might wanna watch. I'm back at the top of the home screen and I wanna show you what it's like when you click on both a show and a movie. I'll start here with Family Feud. At the bottom of the screen, you see there are options to play, record or get more information on the series. I'll click play. One, two, three. Took about three seconds for this show to load. Don't wanna watch right now, you can always record the program and then you'll have the option to record one episode only or record all episodes and add it to your DVR. So now Family Feud is being recorded and I'll show you about DVR coming up in just a minute. Back on the home screen, I'm gonna navigate down to show you what it's like when you want to play a movie. We'll take Tomb Raider, for example. You see the same options, play, record, and full details. For this movie, I'm gonna click play to watch it now. But you'll see here, fast forward is not available because this is the on-demand version. In this case, you may want to add it to your DVR so you can dodge the commercials. And you record a movie just like a TV show. You'll see here, it'll tell you when the next recording is. You click OK, and then your recording is all set. That is a wrap for the home screen. Now let's move on to the live guide. And here it is. First thing I want you to focus on the left of your screen, you will see the list of channels as well as channel numbers. Yes, T-Vision has channel numbers, just like a traditional cable TV service. If you're a longtime cord cutter, that may seem pretty foreign to you, but that is gonna work for a lot of first time cord cutters doesn't hurt to have it there, I guess. Moving to the right, you'll see what is on now and what's on next. And take a look at the center of your screen with Celebrity Family Feud. We just added that to the DVR and you'll see the flashing record button to indicate that that show is being recorded. So now I'll pick something else. How about NBC Connecting? Your options here, play, record, series info, and look to the right, you have here a video preview of the content that you've selected. Now T-Mobile tells me that T-Vision will let you look ahead up to 14 days in advance and that can come in handy if you want to record an upcoming airing, something that is either the next day, the next week, or up to two weeks. You can just select it and add it to your DVR. One more thing about the live guide, look to the very left of the screen where I'm pointing right here. When you click left, you'll have the option to filter the guide by sports, news, movies, and kids. 
I click news and here are the results. You don't see the grid guide anymore. Instead, you see these icons for all the news that is on right now and coming up. Now I've played around with this live guide quite a bit over the last 10 days and there doesn't appear to be a way to favorite channels or reorganize the channel lineup. So you're gonna have to scroll through to find what you want. But again, if you use those channel numbers and memorize them, you'll be able to get to your content a little faster. I just wish there were a little more personalization here like some other services do. Overall, not a bad TV guide, but let's now move to movies and shows. So when you click on either the movies or the shows section, and this is shows, you'll find massive lists of shows and movies from networks that you're subscribed to. As I move to the movies tab, my biggest complaint about these two sections is that there's just no personalization. It's just a giant list. Now on the movies tab, I have noticed, you may have seen it right at the top. Oh, here it is. You have a new banner in the upper left, I see it again here to the right of the screen, upcoming, live. So there are some ways that they're trying to spotlight things that you may want to watch. And when you have the premium channels, there are an awful lot of movies to choose from. Next, I'll move over to the DVR and the first screen here shows things that are already recorded. But when you click to the right, you'll see all the content that is scheduled to be recorded. I'm moving back to the recorded page to give you a closer look at the DVR. When you click on something that you've recorded, you're gonna see these options to play it, get more information, or to delete it. And up at the top, you see that you can either start series recording or delete all recordings. I'm gonna delete this. And then you get the message at the bottom of the screen, recording deleted. So now I'm gonna click on Celebrity Family Feud. Remember earlier, I just put that in my DVR and you'll see my options are to play it, delete it, stop recording, or extend the recording. And when I click play, we'll see the content load here. Again, one, two seconds, two or three seconds. The bottom of the screen, you can see that I'm able to fast forward through the commercials. You can fast forward or rewind on your recordings. Now take a look in the upper right of the screen. You see there are 100 hours of DVR storage and it shows you how much that you've used up and then you can figure out how much that is left. With the live TV plans starting at $40 a month, you get that 100 hours of DVR space. But with the Vibe plan, if you get just the Vibe plan, that's the $10 one, you're gonna have to pay $5 a month extra for this DVR storage. Recordings kept for up to nine months and if you ever fill up your DVR space, the first recording will be automatically deleted. Now, if you can't find what you want to watch on the home screen, live guide shows or movies, you can also use the search feature and let's try it out. News. And my results are here. There are the channels as well as the episodes that are airing right now and coming up. And you see here with all these programs that it'll show you in the upper left corner of the individual shows that it is either upcoming, new, or live. Don't wanna use voice search, there's another option. You can just type whatever you want to watch. So I'll click in news again. You see there are suggestions. Click search and there are my results. Now that I've talked about the service itself, let's get into the T-Vision hub and whether that's worth it. I have it right here in my hand. This is the part that will hook into the back of your TV and then there is a remote. So this is similar to your Roku or your Chromecast with Google TV, as well as an Amazon Fire TV and Apple TV. But at first glance, look at the remote. This is a full-size remote and I've got a couple to compare here. Here's the Google TV Chromecast. Here's a Roku. And here is a Fire TV. This remote is a quite a bit bigger, fits nice in your hand. I'll share a few more thoughts on the remote in just a moment, but first I wanna show you the T-Vision Hub home screen. Now that is separate from the T-Vision home screen. This is just for when you have the Hub. So think of it as if you have a Roku, what the Roku home screen looks like, or the Fire TV home screen. This is the T-Vision Hub home screen that I'm about to show you. Focus here on the center of the screen. You will see the apps that I have installed when I got this, I only had T-Vision, YouTube, and Netflix pre-installed, but you can download a bunch of other apps, including other streaming services like YouTube TV, Hulu, Sling TV, a bunch more from the Google Play Store. Below the list of apps, you'll see a bunch of recommendations, and at the very bottom, an option to customize the channels that you see on the home screen. And adding an app is really easy. Here to the left of the screen, you see apps. Click through to that. Go to the Google Play Store, find whatever app that you'd like, 
and install it. Check out the top of the screen. There are a few things here that are optimized for T-Vision. You have shortcuts to the guide that I showed you as well as the DVR. In just a click, you will get back to the T-Vision Live Guide. The T-Vision Hub supports Google Assistant, which I found was really great for changing channels. I'll fire up T-Vision and show you real quick. National Geographic. And you'll see it's thinking, thinking, and then it changes to the channel in just a few seconds. But the Google Assistant is for more than just changing channels. You can just ask questions like, what's the weather? And in just a couple seconds, there is the forecast for where I live in Miami Beach. A few things about this remote worth pointing out, $50 Android powered, optimized for the T-Vision service. And what does that mean exactly? Well, if you look at the remote, you can see near the top that magenta bar, and that has shortcuts to the TV guide, the home screen and the DVR that I just showed you in the earlier part of the review. Just below the magenta bar, you see shortcuts for Netflix and YouTube, and that just goes to show that you can use the T-Vision hub with lots of different streaming services. It is not tied down to just T-Vision. And at the very bottom of the remote is a numeric keypad. As I mentioned earlier in this review with T-Vision, there are channel numbers associated with the channels, so that can help you get to them faster. Again, this thing is optional. You do not have to buy T-Vision Hub to use T-Vision. It is not like a cable company where they make you use their remote. This is just another type of streaming media player. There are other streaming media players that are supported with T-Vision. At launch, they include Android TV, Google TV, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, but unfortunately at launch, Roku is not compatible with the service. So if you have another streaming media player already, I'd say go ahead and use that compatible device and if you end up falling in love with T-Vision and want this optimized T-Vision Hub, you can buy it later on. That covers the T-Vision Hub. A few final thoughts on the T-Vision service itself. Overall, I'd say it is very easy to navigate and pretty responsive. I hope that was clear through this review. I thought it was pretty fast to get around. Whether you're a first time cord cutter or someone who's been doing this a while, I don't think it'll take you a whole lot of time to get the hang of this service, especially compared to some of the others. All these services have learning curves. This one, it is very minimal. I'd say the biggest con is personalization. And I mentioned that a few times in this review as it related to the home screen and the live guide. With the home screen, I wish it had a little more of the features of a Netflix or a Hulu. Here's Hulu so I can show you what I'm talking about. So I moved off T-Vision for a moment to show you Hulu, just so you can see the difference. I think Hulu does a really good job of recommending content. It always has something for you. Right at the top is keep watching, not at the bottom, as well as TV for you. These are just selections that they've come up with based on the things that you've watched in the past, trying to get you back to your DVR, some holiday related content here. There's just a lot to discover with Hulu and I wish they had more of that with T-Vision. And to show you an improvement T-Vision could make to the live guide, check out Sling. I flipped over to Sling TV's TV guide just to show you the difference because I really like something they do. Here is their guide, all channels is the current view, and they have some of the things that they have with T-Vision. You see there, sports, kids, news, but also my channels, these are your favorite channels, so you can just pop over to that and you don't have to scroll through dozens of channels to find what you wanna watch. For most people, I think it's gonna come down to the channel lineups, the price, and at launch, the eligibility requirement that you must be a T-Mobile customer, that's gonna go away sometime in 2021, but for now, it does exist. I've got a full review on my website, michaelsafe.com, with everything you need to know before you sign up for T-Vision, as well as a separate video that lays out some of those basics. But right now, I wanna know what you think about T-Vision. Are you gonna sign up for the service, or is this something that you're gonna take a pass on? Let me know and explain why in the comments below. If you've got any questions, I'll be happy to answer those as well. So if you found this video helpful, please like it and consider subscribing to my channel. I talk a lot about streaming TV, prepaid cell phone plans, credit cards, and general money tips here on the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.